Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and today we are going over the backrooms level, the foundry, another unnumbered level. Because why should we stay with numbers? Numbers are no fun when you can have no numbers. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Well, let's get right into this video. The Foundry. Survival Difficulty Class 2. Unsafe. Secure. Low entity count. The extra dimensional spell area people have taken to calling the Foundry is fortunately for us not particularly complicated or dangerous. At least not compared to many, many other such areas we've discovered or assembled old into so far. In pursuit of academic completeness, I will describe every part of this space, beginning with the least interesting. <sighs> the upper region of the foundry space may be a sky, or it could be a ceiling. If it is a sky, it has no stars or any other identifiable celestial bodies. If it is a ceiling, it is too far away to be visible. So when and one looks up while visiting, one sees only blackness. It might be interesting to send a camera really and to see how high it really goes. But I suppose there are better uses for our very limited resources. The lower region and is what appears to be a sea of some um, glowing molten substance. As luck would have it, Slam and City recently acquired a very frightened by adjusting bulkhead and a lot uh, address of all people. Or else we have to bring a ticket for a visit to is that the substance is not magma. As some of us had guessed, but rather more pure liquid. Her bet was on liquid iron. Vividly, it could be any metal with a similar melting point and density. The ocean of liquid metal extends in all directions and is relatively static. There are occasional bubbles, which cause slight ripples in the surface, but it is otherwise still. We aren't sure how it remains in it, its liquid state. It must be constantly heated by some enormous source of energy below the surface. But what that could be or how far down the fluid goes are, mysteri are mysteries for now. Extending out of this reservoir is a support structure comprised of lattice beams and, and girders with a number of central Ostankians. This scaffolding holds up the platform, but on that platform is the facility that has been dubbed the Foundry. This structure occupies about 5 cubic miles of space it's in total. As of last estimate, the platform foundation is built onto occupies an area of about <clears throat> three and a half square miles, or as calculated for measurements of the perimeter. These dimensions have remained static at every measurement. The internal volume of the foundry is subject to change, however, which I will cover it later on in this document. If I were to draw upon my industrial experience and compare the foundry to a real war, a real war or the facility of some kind, I would say it's, it most resembles an oil refinery, superficially at least. It has the characteristics, fungal caught of wiping of pipes and railings and ladders, and smoke is that to someone not familiar with this place might look terribly complex and confusing. And it often is. The foundry exhibits more verticality than a terrestrial or oil refinery, however. A true refinery needs room to spread out and occupy a wide area. The foundry looks folded, stacked upon itself, claustrophobically, to make a genuinely imposing lump of machinery that, that soars high above your head. Perched on its platform all by itself in this otherwise empty space. It brings to mind a great ball of string, almost, or a heart. I'm afraid that that's where the easy part of this report ends. It's simple enough to describe the appearance of the foundry, and I suppose that's the case with many things. It's the function of the facility that confounds its purpose, its method of operation, its origin. All these things are mysteries. It may have none of them at all, for all we know. We've certainly encountered other things in this adopted 
of other world that defy all of reason. This could merely be another. That is a scientifically unhelpful perspective, however, and I will do my best to record what is known, and perhaps some speculation that it is at least founded on reliable observations and good hard data. Production Truth to its name, the foundry produces things. Believe me when I say I wish I could be more specific than that, but in this instance, truth rejects simplicity. When and arriving at the a foundry at the road of the door is explained in more detail on the on subsequent pages, what of we be presented with the front view of the structure. This facade, insofar as it could be called that, features the facility's largest interest. To the left and right are structures resembling cargo loading bays, as one might see in the rear of a large grocery store or similar. Recessed into these are eight padded hoppers, four to each bay, with each re Receiving discharge from a number of pipes, conveyor rods, pneumatic tubes, and chutes. Things emerge from these transport mechanisms and land in the hoppers, each of which has a hatch on the side, apparently for ease of access by humans or humanoids. All goods produced by the foundry are manufactured in one way or another, whether rudimentary or complex. The goods are generally of industrial or military use, but there are frequent exceptions. There does not appear to be any kind of yet recognizable pattern to the nature of these goods their amount, or the frequency with which they appear. However, I will provide here a brief list of examples of items that have been found in a receptacle after a discharge event. We're just going to avoid these dates that have no meaning because we're in the back rooms and who knows if they're even correct anymore. Item Suspense. Nine unmarked 9mm handguns with magazines. Approximately 306 a 9mm handgun cartridges, 11 sledgehammers, 6 reels of copper wire, 12 letterman style iron multi tools, 23 mason jars, most shattered in contact with the receptacle's bottom, 1 cast iron teapot, and approximately 500 carpenter snails. Next, there were 9 cast iron pants, 256 serrated hunter's knives, approximately, three, approximately 800 black bolts, 53 12 inch adjustable wrenches. Go to 44 and rolls of industrial duct tape, three hacksaws, and one desk fan, cherry red. Then next there were 17 complete oxyacetylene wielding slash cutting apparatus, including torches, pressure regulars, hoses, and tanks pressurized with clean in oxyacetylene. In fuel, I cannot say that word. That is a long word. Four died SCBA, a tanks with hardnesses and regulators, not pressurized, 19 pairs of rubberized working gloves, and one stray left glove. 38 boiler suits, 51 electric screwdrivers, each with a fully charged battery a pack. Jeez, it, should, it, it does all that, but what, not one sonic screwdriver? How am I supposed to cosplay as yes, the doctor? Next, there were 241 steel ingots, believed to be a, a tool steel specifically after stress and hardness testing. 29 12-gauge pump extra stock guns, uh, approximately 40 or 150 shotgun shells, as uh, our buckshot, 5 sliding T e bevels, 1 I-beam, 22 feet long, 683 rebar safety caps, orange, 13 spools of large gauge of wire rope, 1 lava a lamp, purple dispensed sour foam to avoid shattering, 1 plastic wrapped bundle of components of initially unknown purpose, later determined to be a swing set. The foundry suspension bays are under continual watch by a combination of Slam City, a militia, and watchdog volunteers. And all its products are to be remanded to the office of the chief engineer for resource allocation in the case of particularly of practically useful items or community lottery, as with items such as the lava lamp. It is the reader's guess as well as mine what a meaning any of this has, if any. The facility is clearly capable of producing a wide array of materials with an enormous number of machining and manufacturing methods. In fact, it's categorically impossible for a single facility to produce as many different kinds of ob objects or main size it appears to be. 
and saving the absence of any arcane forces. And such that it does not hold water in this case, unfortunately. There is a lot to read. <sighs> Internal structure. The foundry is at least partially traversable and technically inevitable. Though it's dangerous enough that strict access control also have been put in place to prevent further casualties. As was previously, the internal configuration of the foundry does not conform to our understanding of terrestrial physics. Multiple attempts about the foundry's layout have been attempted, and some, with the aid of our ex excellent surveying team, were even partially successful. However, it was found out on subsequent dives that the foundry's internal rules changed dramatically and often with no external indications whatsoever that a change has taken place. So the serving teams have offered the theory that the changes might even occur with people still inside. There's of course no particular guarantee or reason they wouldn't. And this could be the explanation for a number of still missing personnel. Not only does the floor plan of the building change, but the mentions are also spatially inconsistent too. We wait the foundry is larger on the inside than it is on the outside. Sounds familiar. I made a reference to that earlier, though. I right, significant margin specifics are obviously difficult to attain. It's like a lot of things in anomaly universes are larger on the inside than they are on the outside. Put 184 in any structure, it's going to be larger on the inside than the outside. I should actually put it in my room, see how big it gets then. <laughs> um. By significant margin and specifics are obviously difficult to attain, but recent estimates have provided an internal volume of at least 10 times larger than the amount visible from outside of a structure. It could be worded that, considering where we find ourselves, it could very well be infinite for all we know, though what this infinity would be aid of is anyone's guess. The substance of the place is perhaps easier to contend with than its arrangement. The meat of the foundry, as it were, is largely homogeneous. The ground level and superstructure sections of the foundry are comprised mainly of fast weights of variable width and flooring, hemmed on either side by ductwork, wiring brackets, electrical panels, and other such industrial or goulage. Occasionally, one might pass by running an electro hydraulic pump, turbo generator, or steam generator. Running equipment has been recorded as cycling on or off from time to time but generally is found on. This gives the entire facility a constant hum of running, of running machinery. There are, are access entries that walk above, humming banks of circuit breakers and load centers, some of which are nearly the size of a football pitch. Transformer boxes with their characters angled Oton song could and be found in nearly every hallway. If I put on my old material condition inspector's hat, I would judge all of the spaces on this level barely acceptable with a certain warning to the foreman and a re-inspection due to due shortly very shortly. There is a fog of age about this about the place, and the machinery appears to be quite in desperate need of maintenance, so the floors are fairly dirty. Much of the machinery could do with a new coat of paint. Rust can be found on quite a bit of of the pipeworks, particularly the steam substances, which appear to have been uniformly laid in a, with it's poor gasketing, causing valve and ugin and hissing to be a regular occurrence. For a bad by professional or background, just saying it is in this place is maddening to a matter a degree. The slight changes as one descends foundry's levels are and not for the better, the foundry I mean the situation changes as one descends foundry's levels. The foundry does have basement sub-levels who read the inevitable confusion. No, not even the prize feels like quite sure how a foundry sub suspended on bare scaffolding above an ocean of liquid metal could have levels below the ground floor. But the fact is undeniable. All appears as it ever does within the foundry until one reaches an uncertain depth. This specific limit has changed somewhat between descents. But the average appears to be around sub level 30. At this step, he would traverse with all the begins to corrode. The, a relatively ordered separation between floors and arrangements of passageways loses cohesion. The ladder rails sometimes go nowhere, gantries fly out of 
fly out over enormous yawning cavern spaces that exhibit no deliberation to the arrangement at all, all apart from housing yet more machinery. Many of these are simply not able to be traveled. Walkways terminate. Eight ladders veer off at, at useless right angles from the ground and seven to the walls. Passages circle back up upon one another or rise up and then down angles in such a way that crests and are not able to climb. The logic begins to drain out, like use oil. All here is all operational. The equipment still runs, the lights are on, the conditions are essentially unchanged, but it's all become indifferent to the notion of use. Human agnostic, I have come to think of it. Engineering with no ingenuity, design without conscience. I have once at this level saw a edge of your gold booster pump mounted in the ceiling. Coffee diamond all. Where 30 feet up, impossible to service, with no engineer with any sense at all would have been or, or it's installed. Machinery and architecture placed with all the agency of a tree deciding where to place its roots. <sighs> this changes if one descends further. Few teams have at this structure. It is difficult to find people with the athleticism and climbing skills necessary to continue. As floors gradually become more and more optional, but little has been seen at sub levels 100 below, it's quite different character from what is seen above. The inexplicable disorganization continues and, in fact, worsens, but it's run by degradation as well. Machinery runs only intermittently at this depth and often poorly, if operation at all. Oh. There are shaft misalignments causing terrible streaking. Crush regulators are in a state of semi failure, simply hissing their contents into the atmosphere. These contents are occasionally atomized hydraulic fluid or extremely high temperature steam, making these regions all the more hazardous to explore. Flooding is common where there are Areas floors for fluids to collect. These liquids can be water, oil, hydraulic fluid, even combustible hydrocarbons like heavy fuel or gasoline. Perhaps worst of all, lime begins to fail. Pictures appear to still be in place in many cases, but are simply semi operational or non operational at all. In some cases, expeditionary teams have been able to restore lighting to sections of the foundry at this step by physically tracing wires to the to ejection boxes and actuating their breakers, but due to the structure's internal shifts, there is only ever a temporary solution. There have been reports of foundry levels further down under these where lighting fails entirely, and there is no machinery in noise whatsoever. What these dead levels could contain is anyone's guess, but neither myself nor the mayor are curious and, or, and cruel enough to even ask for volunteers to investigate them. Our brave men and women who have gone that far down come back with enough fright as it is. The notion that a structure is like this could be somehow idiopathic wrinkles the mind very terribly. Wrinkles, that's a word? But as one wanders through the in essence of the a place, it becomes apparent that somehow that is all the foundry is. Intestine, a ball of guts. We have so far found no hint of general central command center with operational controls or monitoring equipment. We have yet to find a single camera or loudspeaker. There are no rooms designed to facilitate human habitation. No vending machines, no bathrooms, no chairs. In fact, there is no ev evidence of human existence within the foundry apart from the machinery designs conforming with those fa commonly found on Earth, both in size and ostensible purpose. We have yet to find and any writing within the foundry. There is none. Not one label or sign with legible lit entering in any language. In fact, aside from the ones outside used to enter it, enter it, the foundry doesn't even contain any doors. And, of course, no inhabitants have been found within the foundry. The foundry does not have any sort of employees, staff, caretakers, workers, or inhabitants of any kind. Regardless of what you may have heard, this can't settle for any reports of monsters or such similar things. People have gone missing or gotten hurt within the foundry, yes. These characters can easily be explained by the dangers inherent in a structure of this layout and behavior. 
There are no confirmed reports of any sort of eminent thing, human or otherwise, within the foundry at any depth explored thus far. There is a lattice work of questions surrounding the foundry as manifold and elaborate and then and as the place itself is. We do not know who or what built the foundry, how or why. We do not know why it produces things that appear to be specifically made for our use, or how the turtle facilities could possibly correlate to the materials and processes needed to produce them. We do not know what pattern there is, if any, to the amount of things it makes, nor do we know of any way to influence the foundry's behavior. We do not know how the foundry itself is supplied with power, oil, water, maintenance, or anything else a structure like this would regularly require in order to continue functioning. For all we know, the foundry itself could very well be sentient in some way, though such a thing as is impossible to verify as any of the other hundreds of possible questions that could flow from this document, and is perhaps foolish to even speculate on. Advisory. As our time of studying the foundry has progressed, it has, become to, it has come to our attention that a number of personnel have taken to entering the foundry for the purpose of mapping, studying, maintaining, and even in some cases, cleaning the inside of the facility and its associated equipment on their own time without direction or oversight. While I have respect for the personal initiative that is this place, I once again remind all those assigned to this research project that the foundry is imminently dangerous. Even at the ground level, structural shifts take place on a regular basis. Equipment malfunctions will become lost in the, in the last month. We have lost track of four personnel who took it upon themselves to enter the foundry with no notification or assistance of any kind. This is a clue personnel assigned to guard the foundry's production sites, with no claim to a research position of any kind. This loss is as tragic as it is unacceptable. As such, I am as of now court ordering with, with the Slam State Vanguard and the Watchdogs to and the Watchdogs to go place the Foundry's own entrances under armed guard until such time that organized and methodical approach to its exploration can be devised with the resources available. The Foundry is not to be entered under any circumstances without direct written and signed permission of both myself and Mayor Halstead until further notice. Extraspatial herniation. Reports from both Vanguard Outriders and Watchdog Patrol teams have, as of at least 23rd September 54, indicated that the internal space of the foundry may be even more volatile than previously estimated. On that date, a Vanguard or an expedition team into the Decatur 2 unsurveyed spatial or aperture led to a cave like environment with freezing cold and Temperatures and precipitation in the form of snow. Despite there not being a visible sky of any kind, the team entered into the unknown space but underestimated the effects of wind chill and, of course, were not adequately equipped for Arctic exploration in the subterranean blizzard. They lost track of the location of the exit warp and claimed they would have expired from exposure had they not made a very fortunate discovery. As in the middle of clearing, relatively free of like reds, one of the vanguards on an unusual light with all alternative. They travel toward it. What they found was a structural support beam rising from the ground, similar to the sort found in many industrial buildings. Prior to the, the sunken was a blank of was a bank of lights, orange amber in color, and well lit by the beam. Was a running electrical generator, apparently powered by a steam connection. A source of which appeared to be an outlet pipe set directly into the stone of the cavern floor. The pressure manifold to the generator was in relatively poor condition and leaking steam into the air. Thereby, was also some isolated electrical equipment of a non function. A junction box for the light fixture and looped sections of warm ductwork existing in entry to stone, as steam pipes did, with an unknown fluid running inside. No such equipment was seen anywhere else nearby. In fact, this space had exhibited no sign whatsoever of sapient life, aside from the jumble of apparently purposeless machinery. A little island of industrial old equipment, the team was also able to use the steam and warm or metal to reconstitute themselves and rest safely while using the light so that by their path through the snow and find a way back. 
One of the team, a Mr. Kendall O'Mathers, had been by half sets previously on an expedition into the level of the foundry before volunteering for an outrider tour. Mr. Mathers claimed with absolute conviction that the strange was shooting in the middle of, the, of nowhere looked exactly like the sort of thing he had seen ever or in the foundry, down to the characteristic radiator fins on the generator, the sound of its helm, the specific orange amber color of the light fixture. Since then, we have received multiple reports from um, Vanguard teams traveling beyond the borders of Slam City and even into other transdimensional spaces. Each is similar. Identification of factory machinery is often easy due to its conspicuous lack of upkeep, even the distinctive color of its safety lights. A small number of these reports Even describe enormous sections of space completely taken over by foundry machinery, occupying hundreds of cubic feet in places that would have, I would not possibly have taken, have ever had previous human traffic, or occasionally places that had explored, that had been explored or previously with no record of such machinery ever being present. In one notable instance, a Vanguard's team in a poorly surveyed other space resembling an infinite. Edwardian Alice was being chased by that space's natives, who were categorized as hostile non human entities in their attempt to elude the Haitian ease. The team encountered a door that did not resemble any of the wooden decorative doors they had encountered until that point. The door was, he was metal, heavy, and in need of both grinding and new coat of paint. According to one scout, the door that issued them at the foundry platform, just as one discovered in the Slam City Materials Warehouse does. In fact, once the stuff gets screeching on the other side, I've subsided the team over the door again and found that it's somehow connected to the warehouse entrance, bringing them home. I have gone over each of these reports and must, against my better nature, resign to the obvious conclusion that Foundry is capable of spreading via some mechanisms that us is unknown as the rest of it. It apparently possesses the ability to traverse dimensional barriers and grow into the worlds beyond its own. Medicine of tumor or metastasis or organ herniation. If one will apply the medical metaphor, the significance of this or what ramifications they could have as of yet are, are as, as yet unknown. Research is always ongoing. I completely miss these. <sighs> oh, well. Uh. <sighs> That was the backrooms level, the foundry. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be making another video tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!